Dagobert II, Latin. Dagobert, c. 2s. Old English, Bert, died 679, was the Merovingian king of the Franks ruling in Austrasia from 675 or 676 until his death. He is one of the more obscure Merovingians. He has been considered a martyr since at least the 9th century. None of the narrative histories of the Merovingian period give an account of Dagobert's reign, which must be reconstructed from several different sources. Upon the death of his father in 656, he was deprived of the succession and exiled to Ireland to live as a monk. His return to Austrasia was arranged by Wilfred, Bishop of York. He ascended the throne following the assassination of his cousin in 675. During his brief reign he made war on the neighboring Frankish kingdom of New Austria, signed a peace treaty with the Lombard kingdom in Italy and reintroduced gold coinage. The only near contemporary assessment of Dagobert's character portrays him as a tyrant. He antagonized the bishops and imposed new taxes. He was assassinated by a conspiracy of the highest nobility. He was succeeded by his cousin, Thuneric III, king of New Austria, against whom he had previously warred. Exiled Dagobert was the son of Sigibert III, ruled 632-516 and an unknown woman. It is unlikely that he was a son of Sigibert's only known wife, Chimnechild, who survived him. He was thus the half-brother of Billy Child, Chimnechild's daughter by Sigibert. He was named for his grandfather, Dagobert I, 623-39. According to the Book of the History of the Franks, which dates to 727, after Sigibert's death, Grimoald, the mayor of the palace and the most powerful official under the king, arranged for Dagobert to be tonsured and placed in the custody of Dido, bishop of Poitiers. Tonsuring rendered Dagobert unfit for the throne, since Merovingian kings always wore their hair long. Dido then sent Dagobert to Ireland. The dating of these events is uncertain. They are usually placed in 656, but a date as early as 651 has also been proposed. No contemporary source describes Dagobert's time in Ireland. The 18th century antiquary Mervyn Archdale was the first to record the association of Dagobert with a specific place in Ireland. He wrote that a local oral tradition current at that time put Dagobert in the monastery of Slane, a conclusion accepted by some modern scholars. Grimold placed his own son, Child Ebert, on the Austrasian throne, but the Neustrians under Clovis II, 639-657, had Grimoald arrested and brought to Paris, where he was executed, because he had acted against his lord, that is, the rightful Merovingian claimant. Clovis's second son, child Eric II, who was still a minor, was placed on the Austrasian throne in 662. He was married to Billy Child, Dagobert's half-sister, and placed under the regency of Chumnikild. He was assassinated, along with his queen and his son, in 675. The murder of child Eric provided the occasion for Dagobert's return, but its immediate result was civil war. The former mayor of the palace, Ebruin, declared to certain Clovis III, son of the new Austrian king Clotar III, 658-673, as king in Austrasia, while Clovis II's third son, Thuneric III, was placed on the new Austrian throne by Leodegar. After Leodegar's capture, Ebroin abandoned Clovis for Thuderic, and in so doing lost his Austrasian allies. In this situation, Dagobert was recalled from his Irish exile. Return from exile While the book of the history of the Franks is the only source to describe the circumstances of Dagobert's exile, the life of Wilfred is the only one to describe his return. This biography of the English bishop Wilfred was composed in the first decades of the 8th century by Stephen of Ripon. According to Stephen, Dagobert was exiled to Ireland in his youth and when his friends and relatives later learned that he was still living they asked Wilfred to bring him to England and from there send him on to Austrasia. The life of Wilfred does not specify who is responsible for recalling Dagobert, 
only that it was friends, amici, and relatives, proximi. The relatives may have been on his mother's side. There is little consensus on who the friends could have been, possibly Walfold, the former mayor of the palace, Pippin of Rustal and Martin of Laon, who came to power, according to the book of the history of the Franks, after the deaths of kings, perhaps in 675, or even Ulton, abbot of St. Maurdes Fossus, who was Irish himself and had connections in Ireland. The exact date of Dagobert's accession is not known. Child Eric II was killed in 675 and Dagobert was on the throne by 676. Reign Dagobert's reign is sparsely recorded. The Book of the History of the Franks, which has a new Austrian perspective, does not mention him again after describing his exile. The historian Richard Gerberding says of the history's author, either he did not believe that Dagobert had returned to become king or he did not want us to know of it. Got only one seventh century work from within the Merovingian kingdoms, the life of Abbasid Alberga of Leon, mentions the reign of Dagobert, and then only in passing. It records that Saddleberga moved her convent from the suburbs of Langers in northern Burgundy to the city of Laon because of forebodings, later proven true by recent fighting between kings Dagobert and Thuneric. This is the only mention of a war between Dagobert and his first cousin, Thuneric III of Neustria. It is an indication of the continuing animosity between Edroin and the Austrasians. That the war was waged deep in Burgundy, which was under New Austrian rule, suggests that Dagobert for a time had the initiative. It may be during this war that Pippin of Erstal and Martin of Laon launched the attack on Thuneric III that was defeated by Edroin at the famous Battle of Lucofau, resulting in Martin's death. While this battle may have taken place after Dagobert's death, a more likely date is September 679, when Dagobert was still alive to issue orders for the raising of levies. In 676, Dagobert signed a most firm pact of peace with the Lombards. This event can be dated precisely because the only source for it, the history of the Lombards written by Paul the Deacon towards the end of the 8th century, reports the appearance of a comet in August the same year. This comet was widely reported across the world from Ireland to Japan. Paul, however, mistakenly places the pact in the reign of the Lombard King Grimoald, who died in 671, before Dagobert had even returned from Ireland. The Lombard king at the time of the comet was actually P.E.R.C.T.A.R.I.T. The only surviving authentic charter issued by Dagobert confirms the possessions of the monastery of Stavlat Mamidi. In the charter Dagobert refers to the donations made by his father, but does not mention that the monastery was founded by Grimoald, the man who had exiled him. Dagobert reintroduced the minting of gold, which had apparently been suspended by child Eric II around 670. His gold tree misses broke with the old Frankish style and copied the cross portent on three steps of contemporary Byzantine solide. Dagobert was also the last king in whose name coins were struck in Marseille. The important royal coinage of Marseille, lasting from 613 until 679, was always struck with the name of a king, which was unusual since Frankish coins typically contain only the names of the moneyer and the mint. In 679, while on his way to Rome to attend the church council, Wilfred stayed at the court of Dagobert, who was grateful to the bishop for having facilitated his return from Ireland. Dagobert offered to appoint Wilfred to the Diocese of Strasbourg, which the life of Wilfred calls the chief bishopric of his realm, but Wilfred declined. Dagobert provided him with arms and companions for the rest of his journey to Rome. In Italy, Wilfred stayed for a time at the court of Dagobert's new ally, P.E.R.C.T.A.R.I.T. In late 679, shortly after Wilfred's visit, Dagobert was assassinated. The life of Wilfred claims that this was engineered by treacherous dukes with the consent of the bishops. According to a late tradition, he was killed by his own godson, John, while hunting in the Wolver. The traditional date of his death, the 23rd of December, 
is likewise based on late sources but widely accepted. Following Dagobert's death, Ed Rowan managed to extend Thuderic III's authority over Austrasia. On Wilfred's return trip through Austrasia in 680, he was arrested by Ebroin's men, who blamed him for having arranged Dagobert's return. According to the report in The Life, Dagobert was a destroyer of cities, despising the councils of the magnates, reducing the people with taxation, being contemptuous of God's churches and their bishops. Martyr Cult the life of Wilfred is the only source to record Dagobert's assassination, but some corroboration comes from the fact that he was being revered as a martyr in the Ardennes region before the end of the 9th century. There are conflicting claims about where Dagobert was buried. According to the life of Bishop Odwine of Rouen, written in the early 8th century, Dagobert was buried in the Church of St. Peter in Rouen alongside his predecessor, child Eric II and child Eric's queen, Billy Child, and infant son, also named Dagobert. This source refers to the Dagobert whom Grimoald tonsured without mentioning his exile, return or reign. The life of Dagobert, on the other hand, says that Dagobert was buried at Stine in the church dedicated to St. Remigius. This is not implausible, since Stine was in the center of Austrasia. The source, however, dates to the 890s and confuses Dagobert II and Dagobert III, 711-715, who died of illness. In 872, the cult of Dagobert was brought to life, or revived, by Charles the Bald, King of West Francia, 848-877, who had his relics translated to a specially built basilica in Stine staffed with its own canons. The timing seems to indicate that Charles was trying to establish himself in that part of Lotharingia that he had only acquired in 870 by the Treaty of Mirsen. The translation of the relics is mentioned in the life of Dagobert and in a charter preserved in the carcellary of the Abbey of Gores, which provides the date. The endowment of the Basilica of St. Dagobert is known from the charter of 1124, also in the carcellary of Gores. The endowment had passed at some point to Beatrice, wife of Godfrey III, Duke of Lower Lorraine, who in 1069 left it to the Abbey of Gores. The canons having grown lax, the monks turned it into a Benedictine priory. Dagobert's feast day was the 23rd of December. This day is given in the life of Dagobert, in the now lost calendar of saints made for Emma, wife of King Lothar of France, 954-986, and in the Octaria, local additions to the martyrology of Usure from the area of modern Belgium. One Octarium, however, places his feast on the 11th of September. A lead manuscript of the Martyrology of Adu of Vienne also places Dagobert's death on 23 December. Dagobert's festival was never widespread outside of Stine. Generally, it became associated with places associated with Dagobert I. It was still being celebrated at Verdun as late as the 16th century. The prior of Stine was suppressed in 1580 and in 1591 the buildings were sacked by Protestants. Dagobert's relics were dispersed, with some ending up in St. Gislin. Notes Bibliography